Hello everyone, welcome along to the workshop here at Rathbone Manor and today I'm going to be taking a look at these pliers here and these are MIG welding pliers uh, it's one of those things that uh, I never knew I really needed until I found some at the car boot sale last week so uh, let's bring the camera down here to the workbench and we'll uh, take a closer look OK, so when I picked these uh, pliers up last week, they were in a bit of a state, they were very dirty and they were covered in what looks like glue or something like that there all over them and they were a bit of a mess. So I spent probably about half an hour cleaning them up and this is the result guys, so it's a lot cleaner. MIG welding pliers. Now I doubt, I, I'd imagine some of you guys are familiar with these things, but um, if you're not uh, MIG welding is a kind of welding that uses um, wire um, and CO2 argon mix gas to create a nice clean weld um, which you don't get with um, stick welding, you get um, a build up of slag over the top of the weld with stick welding which you have to chip off. Um, MIG welding you don't get that but you do get quite a lot of spatter which is these little uh, lumps of um, now cooled off metal here you can see next to the weld here and so that is MIG welding uh, I've done a bit of MIG welding in the past I don't have a MIG welder um, actually here at Rathbone Manor but I do have my old SIP 140 stick welder at the back of the shed as you can see it hasn't been used in decades so why do I need a pair of MIG welding pliers well as I say it is one of those things that you never really know that you actually need until you find them and uh, I found these ones as part of a bunch of tools I think I've got four tools from the stall for four pounds and uh, these are quite interesting so what have we got here then let's take a closer look shall we guys okay so at the front of the pliers we have what looks like a uh, standard long nose pair of pliers but these ones have actually got um, files on the outside of the pliers as you can hopefully see just there there we go they've got files on the outside of the jaws the inside of the jaws are like normal ones we have little serrations here and the rest of it is all plain and we have moving down here we have a wire cutter like you get on many other pliers we have a little round grippy section just there moving along a bit we have spring loaded as you can see then we have some more jaws going on just here, much larger jaws and uh, this, these pair of pliers actually have uh, these little slots on the top with no markings at all because this is just barely marked as a uh, marksman, hopefully you can see that marksman quality tools it says there but there are no markings that I can see for the slots so basically I had to uh, go online and find a similar pair of pliers um, which are actually marked and these are ex actually the uh, different metal gauges in here as you can see from this photograph here three different metal gauges and finally we have double dipped handles here you can see there's a yellow plastic underneath there and we have a nice soft blue uh, gripping going on there it's quite nice quite nice and comfortable they are actually to be honest with you guys um, this is this is the part that differs from an ordinary pair of pliers. We have like a hammer going on there. Look, you can see there's a hammer going on there, and then we have this uh, kind of pointy bit there. So what's that all about? Well, I would say, and um, according to my research, this is for like um, chipping the uh, spatter off of your job, off of what you've just been welding. Yeah, I suppose you could also use it for uh, knocking uh, slag off of um, stick welding too. These things are also known as welpers or welders helpers and I believe um, they were originally for my research on the internet anyway I believe these were originally invented by a company called P Pearson and they called them welpers welders helpers pliers uh, you can see why because you can do quite a lot with them um, these are spring loaded so they're actually uh, quite handy for use when you're wearing welding gauntlets like these here so you can pick them up and manipulate them quite easily with your big thick gloves on so you don't have to take gloves off to use them that's quite a handy feature then 
MIG stands for Metal Inert Gas. So you have um, a wire that goes through the nozzle of the uh, gun. There's a torch actually on the end of a uh, MIG welder and the wire is pushed out by an electric motor and creates an arc which uh, does the welding for you quite easily. And there's a gas surrounding the um, the welding process and it comes out of this nozzle here and that uh, prevents the slag from building up on the weld and keeps the weld nice and tidy and clean. And it's an inert gas so it means it's not non-flammable, it's not going to catch fire while you're welding. And what we have here is this larger section of the jaws here is to remove the um, nozzle, to pull the nozzle off the gun if you need to when it's hot so you don't burn yourself. Uh, inside the nozzle uh, attached to the gun we have the contact tip and that's what this part here is for removing the contact tip and you can use these uh, the, the tips of these things to get in there and clean the nozzle out. Now I don't have any uh, tips nor nozzles from a MIG welder but I do have oddly uh, an M8 bolt here because apparently the M8 bolt is the same size dimensionally on the outside as a contact tip as you can see here um, so we can use that uh, I'm going to use this piece of um, what size is this about 22 millimeter copper pipe here as our um, MIG torch shroud as it were it's near enough it's good enough so basically you can use the uh, front end of the pliers, you can get in there and clean out the spatter from the inside of the nozzle because uh, the nozzles get a lot of spatter trapped inside them apparently and this can impede gas flow and probably even cause a short out if there's enough of um, enough of it in there short, shorting out against the uh, contact tip. So we can clean the spatter out like so with that. And when you want to get it off, you simply get hold of it with the pliers like so, and you can pull it off of the uh, the gun. Moving along to the contact tips, which as I say I do not have, but here's a, a picture of a contact tip here. And as I say, they are dimensionally the same as an M8 uh, thread here, although they are M6 threaded at the end of the uh, nozzles apparently. But if you want to unscrew it while it's hot, you simply get out the nozzle in here. The uh, contact tip in there like that and you can uh, remove it from the torch without again without burning yourself which is uh, quite handy. If we move along to the wire cutter here apparently this depth here um, is the right depth I think it's about what did they say it was uh, six mil or whatever it was where's my vernier let's have a look so it should be in theory let's have a look what this one's at this one's in there at about 12 mil thickness apparently this one but I, I read online that um, you, you could um, butt this up against so here we have our pretend MIG nozzle again and as you can see the uh, MIG welding wire is sticking out a little bit too far so we apparently just butt up the uh, cutters against the end of the nozzle thusly and cut it off and apparently that gives us just about the correct length for welding Obviously you can use the uh, pliers for manipulating hot, freshly welded metal, so that's quite handy there too. The long nose plier section can also be used to draw the welding wire out of the nozzle if you, do, if you need to, out of the gun. Uh, I don't, as I say, I don't have a gun so we'll try and, there we go, there we are. So we've drawn the earthing wire out of here and clouted my knuckle on the vice at the same time and of course if you need to know what gauge metal you're working with you can drop it into one of the um, slots at the top here look so there we go get that get it in there so it gives us a rough idea of what size this aluminium is it's a lot smaller than this slot on the pliers here so it's not quite the size but you can get the idea of what size metal you're working with simply from these little slots on the uh, back of the jaws here and of course we have some nice comfortable grips here these are quite nice these ones are quite like those um, these pliers are actually made by a number of manufacturers now because obviously they've um, you know 
they found out that it's a fairly good design so you can get them made by loads and loads of manufacturers it's like any other good design that comes to the marketplace you'll always get people copying it different companies copying it um, shall we have a go with the uh, files here see if they're any good okay so here we have some copper pipe that's gone a bit dark in colour let's get the uh, MIG pliers in there and have a look Yes, they work quite well. They've done a fairly decent job of um, filing the copper pipe then. Done a very good job on it. Okay then, so uh, that is a look at uh, MIG welding pliers, or whelpers, as they're known as as well. Um, I have seen them on the internet in the past and often thought to myself, I really need to be picking a pair of these up for my... Uh, growing collection of pliers whether they be uh, slip joint pliers or the ordinary style of pliers but I haven't got or I hadn't got a pair of these until I saw them at the car boot sale last Sunday and for a pound I was definitely having them and uh, again it's one of those things that you know I never knew I really needed until I saw them um, and I'm going to be doing a, a bit of a series here on YouTube about uh, things I never really ne knew that I needed. So um, you can keep an eye out on my channel for uh, future editions. So um, if you guys have got um, or use whelpers, please let me know down in the comments down below. Um, even if you don't need a pair, I still reckon they're worth picking up. If you see them at the car boot sale for a pound or so, I still think they're they're worth picking up for your collection. Um, you might never you never ever use them. Um, I probably will never use these pair, but they're definitely going into my collection because um, they're quite quite nice looking pliers, and it's the first pair that I've actually got of whelpers. Okay, everyone. I hope you enjoyed popping over to the uh, workshop here at Rathbone Manor today and taking a look at my. Uh, new pair of whelpers here. Um, if you follow me on Instagram you'll have already seen these pliers on there a time or two I think. Um, hop down there and have a look see what else I've got down there. Um, you can also share your um, kit and uh, car boot sale findings with me on Instagram too. Um, if you enjoyed today's video please feel free to uh, subscribe to my channel because that would help. Um, please feel free to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video too. And um, as I say, stay tuned because I'm sure I will have uh, another video in the future of something else that I didn't realise that I absolutely needed. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out on my channel and I will catch you guys back here at Rathbone Manor in the very near th future. The very near future even. So. Um, Thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you later. <laughs>